Hello, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Uh, so I am Emmanuel Charit. I'm the CEO of Dashlane. Today we help about 10 million people in 100 different countries with their uh, digital identity. And I'm here to talk about our growth, obviously, but I'm also here to talk about um, how everyone in this room actually hold the keys to uh, this most important concept of digital independence and why you are important in that story. So in a sense, I'm going to talk more about you than, uh, uh, than about us. So let's think about uh, the internet as it stands today. Think about all the promises of the internet, the infinite connections, the broad access to knowledge, the ability to connect with each other, the seamless transactions. After all, this is why there is such a thing as the Web Summit. It's because we want to make the internet as good as the promises uh, that we've heard. It's to make this a reality. But the reality is, unfortunately, more complicated. Two years ago, I was on this very stage, actually, somewhere in that building, right at the moment where the US presidential election was the victim of uh, a, a major hack. The password, the email password of the chairman of one of the two campaigns was compromised, which led to the most important election in the second biggest democracy on the planet being compromised. And right as we speak right now, Americans are voting again for their midterm elections, and all experts agree that the risk is much higher today than it was two years ago, and that if anything bad happens, it is going to be because someone's digital identity is being compromised. And that's just one example. But if I think about something more recent, just a few weeks ago, Facebook announced that it had been the victim of its biggest hack ever, and that for almost two years, the identity tokens of 90 million of its users had been accessible to hackers. Now, 90 million is a big number. That's as big as the population of an entire country like Germany. But what's even more important is the meaning of that, because those identity tokens are actually the keys uh, to the millions of apps and websites to which you can connect using Facebook Connect. You're all familiar with that Facebook Connect button. And so these tokens are exposed to hackers for 18 months, for two years maybe. Nobody really knows, which means that even if you've never used Facebook Connect, those hackers can access any of those accounts on any of these millions of apps and websites just because you have a Facebook account. And think about the fact that a few days after Facebook announced that, Google announced something essentially similar, albeit of smaller scale, which led to the dramatic shutdown of Google+. So there is a first lesson there, which is that centralizing a lot of digital identity information in one big vault is a very bad idea, because nobody is too big to fail. And so what does this mean for two more? Well, in reality, when you think about these two examples, the US elections, Facebook, Google, it means we are racing towards a future in which the internet becomes so dangerous, so toxic, so complicated, that entire populations, organizations, governments may actually decide to disconnect from it. And so as a society, we have to start acknowledging something we may not have thought about, which is that there is something fundamentally broken about the internet, even though we may not realize it. Now, the other thing about the internet that is fascinating is that it does not belong to anyone. It actually belongs to everyone. We all own a piece of it. And so when we think about the question of how can we fix that problem, uh, that is a question where we are all involved because, again, we, each and every one of us here, own a piece of the internet. And so let's talk about where the problem starts. The problem starts with digital identity. This is the biggest and most universal issue on the internet because at the end of the day today, we have so many accounts that we do not even remember uh, where they are, what data we have stored in the cloud. We tend to use the same password everywhere because it's easier, even though we know it's a bad idea. But think about 
Think about what I just said. Imagine that you made 200 copies of your house keys and gave them to anyone who would come to deliver something. That sounds crazy. Well, that's what we are all doing today with our uh, digital identity. And uh, because the internet belongs to everyone, anytime one of us is compromised, it leads to all of us being compromised. Digital identity is not an individual issue anymore. It has become truly a social responsibility. So, obviously, people are the solution, but at the end of the day, people need technology to help solve the problems that technology has created, because the problem has become too complex. When you think about it, we have so many accounts which we have to use on so many devices that doing that without the use of tools and technology is impossible, and that's why we created Dashlane. We've built a set of apps that are available across all the major operating systems, which you can see here. And those apps are aimed at doing fundamentally two things that are the core issues of digital identity today. The first one is providing you with a secure, decentralized vault where you can put all of your digital identity information, names, addresses, phone numbers, credit cards, bank accounts, and of course, emails and passwords to make sure that this information is available across all your devices in a secure and decentralized way. But that's not enough. The other key problem is that, that information, that identity information is useless if you can't use it, which is why the other thing we do is we allow you to actually, with an incredible level of convenience, use that information in apps, in websites, across all your devices, across all the platforms you transact with. And it's by doing those two things and doing them, I think, really well that we have seen for our company a lot of growth. Because when you think about how the problem is evolving, well, it starts with how many digital accounts we all have. And in average today, if I was to poll the people here, most people have 200. So just in this room alone, I'm looking at you know, uh, 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 hundreds of thousands of digital accounts that you all collectively have. And by the way, that is going very fast. That number is doubling every five years. And to make matters worse, you have to use those digital accounts now on a growing number of devices, three, four, five, phones, tablets, computers. So the problem is just too complicated, and those macro trends are accelerating, which is, to, to some extent, one of the reasons behind our growth. To give you some numbers today, we have uh, slightly more than, it's actually more like 11 million users today in about 100 different countries. We help our users manage more than 600 million digital accounts. We've also helped them uh, transact um, more than 100 million times for e-commerce e transactions for an aggregated value of $18 billion, which shows, by the way, that uh, digital identity is not just about logins and passwords. It's about all these transactions that are incredibly complex and risky today. Now, when you think about growth, uh, that means also the growth of our team. As our team has grown from 20 people four years ago to more than 200 today. We've been able to raise more than $80 million of capital to build that team, which is today the largest, most talented, and most well-resourced team on the planet focusing on this issue, which is potentially the biggest issue of the Internet today. And I'm especially excited to talk about our team because after having opened our global offices in Paris and New York, we are announcing today that we have officially opened our third global office here in Lisbon, Portugal, where we're going to be hiring massively uh, in the next few weeks and months to grow our team there. So when you talk about growth, it's great to talk about the growth that has happened, but it's even more important to talk about the growth that's ahead of us. And when you think about the problem we're solving, What's absolutely staggering about it is that there are actually 3 billion people, including all of you, that need a solution to this problem today. It's a universal problem. And when you look at how many actually have any solution, it's less than 1%. So we are working on something for which the growth ahead is absolutely gigantic. That's why we need to build uh, the best possible team to solve that. So, 
at the end of the day, I think you understand now why digital identity is probably the biggest unsolved, most universal problem on the internet. And I want to explain to you why the solution is actually going to come from all of you, from what I call digital independence, from the fact that you are all going to claim your digital independence. If you think about the problem from the perspective of an individual, each and every one of you, you are constantly subject to the challenges of digital identity, the passwords you don't remember, the data you don't have, your identity that risks being stolen, your accounts that could be compromised. I speak with people all the time that are well aware of the issue but have no idea where to start. They're helpless. They don't know. They don't think it's under their control at all. So we all own the Internet. Who should we turn to to help fix the problem? Well, the first and most obvious idea is maybe we should turn to our governments. After all, you know, isn't it their job to fix the Internet? Well, governments can do things. If you think about the European Union, for instance, the European Union has taken a fantastic step with GDPR in starting to address the identity and the privacy concerns of its citizens. Uh, and they've done so well that now that trend is propagating to the US and you have the large tech companies in the US that are actually asking to be regulated to their own government. So governments can do things, and they are. But at the end of the day, you know as well as I do that governments are not great at building digital solutions that have large-scale adoptions, and governments are not great at solving problems that ignore their national borders. So the solution is probably not going to come from there. Now, maybe the solution is going to come from one of the tech giants, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Apples, the Microsoft of the world. And yes, they can build digital solutions that achieve large-scale adoption. But first of all, identity is a problem that crosses all borders between operating systems, platforms, devices. So that's a very hard problem for those tech companies, those tech giants who are essentially operating system companies to solve. But on top of that, their core business model is based on aggregating a lot of our data, including our identity data, putting it in one big gigantic vault, and then monetizing that data. So the idea that they are actually going to be the ones solving digital identity is very unlikely to succeed. So where is the solution? Well, the solution is really in, uh, as you have understood, starting to become independent from that as individuals, claiming our digital independence. And that starts with taking back control of your digital identity. So what does that mean concretely? Well, very simple things. The first thing you can all do, we should all do, is let's do something to manage our passwords. Use a decentralized password management solution, especially you in an arena like this, because every time one of you is hacked, it makes the internet even worse. And then the second thing you can do is educate people, talk to your friends, tell them about the importance of this, help them understand why this is a collective social responsibility, not an individual problem. And finally, the last thing you can do is join us to help solve that problem. So welcome to the rise of digital independence. Thank you.